and welcome back to the sim in this one we're jumping in with the kodiak to reset up our alpha yoke now that in 9.12 of spad.next there have been some changes made we're no longer setting up the joystick in any special way that's going to allow us to continue to publish device snippets but also to now leverage the benefits of all modes so let's go ahead and jump into it setting up the alpha yoke in version 9.12.52 but pretty much any of the newer 0912s and on has changes when we come into our settings into our devices under joysticks you'll have your alpha enabled now previous to anything you may have seen before we're now going to change the way we use the joystick and the button modes. We're going to set them all back to standard default push button mode. Now previously push buttons, simple push buttons, and switches had different characteristics and to use them for certain modes required you be in one of these alternate operating modes. In 09.12 the introduction of all the capabilities is now possible with the standard push button mode. So with that, we're going to change everything back to standard or push button. By setting it to default, this also allows us to be able to publish snippets again. So this is great, means everybody will be consistent and there isn't a lot of confusion based on, well, what mode did you have your buttons or switches in? So now when we come to our controls and we go to our alpha, you're going to find that we can select the buttons. And when we go to the online snippets under alpha flight controls, under complete device, and don't forget if you have troubles finding things, uncheck the only for current aircraft. Do a search for my name and you're going to find a new snippet that we just put up which is 6089. This is the SWS Kodiak Honeycomb Alpha Yoke and as explained in the comment uh, this is all based on a default button mapping. So no longer using the previous custom mapping uh, where we had turn things on and off. So pretty much the previous alpha that I had done for the Kodiak, no need for it. This is the one. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to hit OK. And then, of course, you're going to replace all events and away you go. However, if you're like me, you're going to end up having other profiles that have this previous mapping done. So let's go ahead and jump into how we go about modifying an existing setup now that we've configured the buttons to all be in standard mode. Now normally, this isn't a big deal, except we had done things and made changes. So what you're going to find is now anything that was a simple push button, like what we were using so we could have a pressed and released mode, well, when those get converted, the release stays correct, but the button pressed does not. It goes to a short time. So right now, we wouldn't be able to press and hold our push to talk as that would just fire it for the short time. So what we could do is obviously add an event and now we have a larger list. So the thing to keep in mind is that the short press and uh, long press as well as the button press and button released have all been combined. So the simple mode is just not needed anymore. On top of which button press is the same as a switch on and button released is the same as a switch off. So this is why we can now bring all of those together and reduce what we need for configuration. And it lets us do a lot more on the same button and never have to worry about flipping between different devices. So what do we do though, where we've got a whole bunch of events that we've set up 
and we don't want to go through the hassle of having to go back and change this to a button press uh, versus short mode. Well, one quick way of doing this is to copy the entire device. So we're going to go to copy, complete device. I recommend using Notepad++ and when you open it up and you have a new empty page, you can go ahead and paste, control V, what we just copied, which was the entire device. Now here you'll see that as these buttons show up, you'll see that there is now a trigger press. So what we can do is highlight it, hit control F. That's going to open up the find dialog where we can now go to replace and you'll see previously I'd set this up. We're going to find and replace with press IMM. This will behave like a switch on event. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at these and we're going to go one by one and we're going to replace them and it's automatically going to advance. So I come to the next one and we can see this for the taxi light and I know that the taxi light is a on off switch so I'm going to replace that. Obviously we could hit replace all but we want to make sure we don't replace something that we do want a short for versus a long event. You could leave it, you could do them all and go one by one and fix just the one offs since the majority actually need the flip to the immediate. But here we can see we want that one replaced, the next is a strobe light, the next one is the alternator, then we've got the battery, then I've got the avionics master, absolutely. Uh, then we've got virtual joystick action. So this is button number one. So that was our button right here, which has got the push to talk. So we want to replace that. Then up next was going to be the autopilot disconnect. And here's an example where I want the short press to send the autopilot off. And I want the long press to do the autopilot off and yaw damper. So I'm going to skip this one. Then we come to the next event. And this is the rudder trim right. And that's going to also have a repeat in it. So that's definitely a button pressed. Uh, because we want that to fire multiple times. And so those are these raw, uh, push button switches here. So we're going to hit replace. And the next one is trim left. We're going to replace that. We got our elevator trim. We're going to replace that. We've got another button number seven. And we've got our ident. So for our ident, we could leave this as a short press so that we can reserve something for a long press that wouldn't also set the ident. Next up, we've got some events for conditions, sim on ground, parking brake position. So button number four is this, and we use the pushback, and we use the AP VNAV armed uh, as an example for a couple different items. So short press and long press. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to skip that one and press immediately. Yeah. So on the next one, we're down to the aux bus XMLR value on, value off. So this has a press and a release. So that's a switch. We're going to go ahead and, uh, whoops, we need to go backward direction and we need to replace. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the uh, lighting switch light landing. Same thing. So for the landing light there using an LVAR, it also would need to have been replaced. So then it wraps around and we can simply go next and make sure as we look through that there was nothing that we needed to worry about. So those are the only two that are left. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit control A, copy everything.
Control C to copy it. Go ahead, move that out of the way. We'll come in and we'll hit the paste button and it'll ask us do we want to replace everything. We're going to hit yes. So I'm going to go ahead, save my profile. And now what you'll see is this replace that with the pressed and released. So now we've got our press and our release. So that's working great. We've got our autopilot off and here. So we've got a short and a long event. Our autopilot. And we turn on our yaw damper. We'll see that pressing that button once disables the autopilot. The autopilot goes out. And if I were to hold it, see, press does nothing, hold it. Now we get the yaw damper kicking off as well. When we look at button number three, this is our Microsoft uh, transponder ident. So in a previous one, I had to add this manually. Uh, we no longer need this event since this event now exists in the sim. So we're going to go ahead, send a simulation event for ident. There it is, transponder ident. Uh, you can use toggle, you can use on. Uh, it's automatically going to go out after the 18 seconds anyway. So same thing as pressing the ident button. Uh, this will run for 18 seconds. And then it goes out. So if we press it on the joystick as well, there we go. We get the ident and 18 seconds or so, it's going to go back off. So coming back into SPAD.next, number four, that was going to, when on the ground, it's going to toggle the pushback uh, when pressed for a short time. We previously had VNAV armed uh, on this button as well, but we can go ahead and remove that. So I'm going to delete that. Don't need it. Five, that's your elevator trim, but of course it checks seven to make sure that they're together. Uh, to trim up and trim down. You're also going to find that we've got the button repeat on that. Six is the trim down. It looks to make sure that button eight, the one to the right of it, and again, it's got the repeat on it. Seven and eight are nothing because we're just using them to double check. Nine is rudder trim, and it's looking for the same thing. It's looking to make sure that 11 is associated, 10 is rudder trim right, uh, and it was looking for 12. So 11 and 12 have nothing on them. So when we're looking at button 13, and we keep an eye on our switches, so that's going to be the alternator on. We turn it off, we get our alternator off, and so alternator on and off those events work sets both the generator and the alternator button 15 is the master battery so of course battery on battery off battery on works perfectly good 17 so again the even numbers are the bottom of these switches so they don't matter we got our avionics master so that'll turn our avionics bus on and then over here on 19, because again, we skip one, uh, this is turning on the LVAR for the AUX bus switch. 21 is the beacon light. So we've got our beacon light control. 23, this is the landing light. And because the landing light's an LVAR, I use the two for on and the off for off. Uh, if you want pulse, you could change that to a one instead. 25 is your taxi lights, so turn those on and off. 27 is the nav light, and so those turn on and off. And then 29 is our strobe light, so those are all functioning with switch on and switch off states as well. These uh, are normally the starter magnetos. Uh, I did not put anything directly on those, uh, but they could have been used to function things involving the starter if you wanted those. But I put those two switches 
on the Bravo instead. Well, that's about going to do it for today. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't, consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.